what tends to exacerbate insomnia is you staying in bed, not being able to fall asleep. And so what happens? You get stressed out. You start getting anxiety because you're like, I'm still not falling asleep. You look at the clock. It's already 3 or 4 a.m. You're like, man, I have to get up at 6 or 7 a.m. I don't have much time to fall asleep. So that those thoughts all contribute to the anxiety and the stress. And so you start associating, your brain starts associating the bed with stress and anxiety the longer mm. you stay in it. So the idea of stimulus control is you leave the bed to break the association between stress, anxiety, and the bed and the bedroom and sleep. Because if you associate anxiety with being in your bed and in your bedroom, you start associating with sleep. And so the idea is you break that by leaving the bedroom whenever you can't fall asleep in 15 or 20 minutes. You go sit in a recliner, do something relaxing, something that's not stimulating. So watch a boring TV show, listen to music, meditate read a book that's not too stimulating until you feel tired. And then whenever you feel tired, like you're about to fall asleep, then you go back in the bed and you repeat that cycle until you eventually fall asleep. So, yeah. 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 And, I, and I've also heard, you know, I think we're so like to the point of you saying uh, that we're stimulated by light. I think one of the most um, common things nowadays is before going to sleep, just looking at your phone, yeah. just, Kind of like checking up social media, seeing who texted, seeing seeing what happened. And, I, and I've noticed, honestly, whenever I, I, I eat uh, at 7 and then I go to sleep around 10, 11. And I just read a book instead, instead of using my screen. I've noticed that, you know, I just tend to have a better sleep that day. But, and it's just, you know, it's almost like if you want to, like, grow muscle and like build up you know there's certain things that you have to do well if you want better sleep you know there's certain things that you have to do the body is just like naturally created in that way yeah i have had insomnia before have you ever had like insomnia i would say thankfully i, I haven't but sometimes i have had those moments where i could only sleep like five hours or three hours and then I, I would have to wake up because I just couldn't fall back into sleep. But it happens rarely. We were talking about the weekend, how some people, a lot of people, it's very common to sleep in on the weekend and then get up early Monday the next day. So like if you, you know, you slept in on Sunday till like 9 or 10 a.m. And then Monday you got to get up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. to go to work or school. Well, if you do that every single week and you think about it, like you're doing it every single week, you're resetting your sleep cycle, you're resetting your brain and the way it's used to getting up. And that's happening like a lot. So it's like, when you think about it like that, you start realizing, wow, I'm really putting my brain through a, you know, quite a time every week doing that. And so that's why one of the things about one of the treatments for insomnia and, and sleep hygiene in general, that's good for everyone is to go to sleep at the same time and to wake up at the same time, because then you're not constantly, you know, bombarding your brain with a new wake up time and sleep time. It's like you want to have consistency in that. So your brain can get used to it and not have that sudden shift every week, because sometimes it can lead to insomnia, sleep problems or other people. It might just make them feel tired on Monday and Tuesday till they their sleep cycle kind of gets back into the week. So let's say, for example, somebody is is struggling with insomnia right now and they want to kind of fix it but they their schedule just kind of changes right one day they they uh go finish work at 10 another day they finish at 6 p.m and then you know it's just like constantly changing throughout the week is there a way that that they could still manage to overcome that insomnia yeah, so that's actually where a lot of uh, uh, shift work sleep disorders can come from is people who do a lot of shift work at night and they have to sleep during the day or it changes from week to week. That's mm -hmm. why it's quite common for people in those job positions to develop the shift work sleep disorder. Um, just for that reason, you know, you're not getting a consistent sleep schedule. So the brain's constantly having to reset the circadian rhythm and the sleep cycle. So there's these things called uh, sleep light boxes, I think. And it's like a, like a thing like this that lights up and it's really bright. And then they have advanced ones and stuff. You can buy them on Amazon. And so people will put them on their desk, I think at work or during the day. 
when they're not sleeping. And so that light stimulus goes in and then keeps their circadian rhythm in the right place. And so I would say people who have shift work at night and or they have to work at night and then they have to sleep during the day. Well, if they have to sleep during the day, they have to block out as much light as possible because like I said, that circadian rhythm depends on the light to wake up and then the dark to sleep. My my body like starts feeling like sleepy at, at around 9, 10, 11. But then once I pass that that um, time frame, my body just like stays awake yeah, it's like because of the blue light. Yeah. yeah. Like I noticed that too. Like whenever I was having insomnia pretty bad, I noticed that whenever I wouldn't be able to fall asleep past, I would say around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., it's like all of a sudden the tiredness went away. And then I just had this energy. And then that energy drove these racing thoughts at night. And then that just did not be, it's like, I couldn't stop thinking. I couldn't turn my brain off. Like it kept mm-hmm. on to think about what are you going to do the next day? What's your plan for this? Oh, you still have to figure this out. There's this problem to solve you. Oh, what is this philosophy? Let's get into existentialism and let's think about physics and God and all this stuff. And yeah. it just keeps going and going. And I'm like, God, you know, I'm trying to fall asleep, you know, just turn off and I can't turn it off. Or like we talked about before, how we both had our brain trying to solve math problems or we trying to. Yeah, solve- dude, I, that's crazy that, that you had that too. Cause yeah, yeah I remember yeah so there you go so like it's weird like it's weird how the brain it's like after you don't fall asleep by a certain time the energy increases you think it'd be the opposite yeah and what 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 did uh people say that it's the best time to fall asleep because i know that there's like a time from between I, i've heard that there's a time from between 10 p.m and 2 a.m where that's like the time frame naturally where where your body can receive the most rest during that time once you pass that time frame after 2 p.m you know the rest you know uh time that you sleep from then on is just like it's still good but it's not the the best sleep yeah i actually don't know but um it seems like it's based on my experience you know anecdotally yeah it seems like for me at least if i stay up past two it's gonna be hard to fall asleep if I go to bed around nine or 10 or even close to 11, then I'm tired. I'm still kind of in that tired state of, I feel like I can fall asleep. 